Ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the Sync Digital Wellbeing Summit, live at Ithra and broadcasting to the world. There are so many amazing conversations currently happening online. We've had so many comments from families discussing digital well-being at home now, to someone even saying that Atomic Habits, written by James Clear, one of yesterday's speaker, was the best book ever. I agree. Next, we are going to talk about Generation Z versus the, the, the digital world. For those of you who don't know Generation Z, including me, also known as Zoomers, came after Millennials and preceding Generation Alpha. So that would make most of member, so that would make most members of Generation Z children of Generation X. Nice. And to tell us more about that, please welcome to the stage Rodney Collins, PhD, SVP, Director of McCain World Group, Truth, Truth Central, who has flown all the way over from the UK, Ms. Rodney, Mr. Rodney Collins. Stay on yours. It's a pleasure to be with you today and to spend the next 40 minutes talking about the future of digital well-being and Generation Z or Generation Z. I have to start with a correction. I know it's going to be difficult for many of you to believe this, but I am not a member of Gen Z. <laughs> I'm a cultural anthropologist. And for the last year, I've been working with the Global Council of Gen Z to understand their experiences and expectations of well-being and digital technology. In a few minutes, I will be joined by three incredible panelists to talk about the work that they are doing with this generation. But before they join me, I would like to provide you with three learnings from the work that I've been doing with our Global Council. The first learning comes from a quote from one of our participants. This quote is, people already think of their devices as an extension of their body. Another one of our Gen Z participants told us, it used to feel like technology was something in the world, and now it feels like the world is inside of technology. These kinds of observations are very important for multiple reasons. They urge us to rethink our understanding and definitions of wellness. Digital life is not seen as a separate domain of experience for this generation. It is tangled and twisted and knotted up with their everyday experience. It makes us question how we define well-being. We would argue that we would need to add an additional dimension to the World Health Organization's definition of wellness. That is, in addition to mental, social, physical, spiritual, and financial well and financial wellness, we need to add digital well-being to that understanding. Now the second learning and area of attention is one that many of us have been speaking about in the corridors of the summit. Well-being is closely linked to a person's sense of purpose, believing that they belong to something larger than themselves. You might call it religious or spiritual or even just a place in the order of things. When we asked our Gen Z council about the effects of digital life on their spiritual well-being, their responses were mostly negative. One participant told us, these two things are contradictory. Spiritual well-being cannot be found anywhere near smart devices. It is all within. These young people associate screen time with zoning out, becoming zombies, doing mindless effort, 